This is the new Kia Nero, and it's a little bit like the British economy because it's suffering from some serious inflation. The price has gone up compared to the old version by around 10%. Thing is though, unlike the British economy, are you actually getting value for money? Well, in this video, I'm gonna find out. I'm gonna talk you around the exterior, the interior. I'm gonna take it for a drive, and of course, I'm gonna launch it to see how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour. Because I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, car wow. Let's start this video by talking about the design of the new Kia Nero. So from the back, it looks really cool. I do think this light design is a bit like on a Volvo, though this is interesting. Look, there's an event there, an event there, and it improves airflow down the side of the car to improve the efficiency. Can you see what they've done here? You can get optional gray paint on this part. So it looks like the side blade on an Audi R8, a crappy side blade on an Audi R8. <laughs> I wouldn't specify that. I'd just have it body colored. It wouldn't sound out so much, it looks so silly. What's interesting as well is that if you go for this electric only version, the EV model, you get 17 inch alloy wheels as standard. However, if you have one of the hybrids, the alloy wheel changes between 16 and 18, depending on which spec you go for. Speaking of which, the entry level model doesn't have blacked out windows like the top two specs do. All models do have black paneling down here and here. And it's quite nice from the side of this car. Favorite bit though, look at the front of this car. I really like this treatment here with this chrome bit of trim. That's really nice and this small grill effect there, the big lights. Now, if you have the entry level car, this bit and this bit is silver rather than chrome on the higher spec cars, but overall a really good looking car if you ask me. Now, the starting price of this new Nero is just under 28,000 pounds, almost 3,000 pounds more than the previous generation car. And if you wanna make sure that you're paying a fair price for the car you're buying, you wanna check out savings, click on the pop-out banner up there for the link in the description below to go to CarWow. Also, you can now sell your current car through CarWow and our dealers will bid on your car to make sure you get a great price for it. We're gonna do all that at a later date. Just simply Google, help me car wow, and we will help you change your car. The inside of this new Nero is even better than the outside. It's really cool and modern, the sweeping design, quality materials, squidgy, squidgy softness, feels expensive. I like the fact that you've got these touch controls here for your climate control, but you can quickly toggle to like this stereo and stuff like that. It's really, really clever. I also like the fact that all the buttons are really where you'd expect them to be. Nice and simple to use for your seat heating and stuff like that. Your drive mode selector here. There's no messing about really. Also, the infotainment system is pretty good. So the digital dials are nice and clean and you can just swipe through different menus quite easily. And there's a lot of information there. Your main infotainment system is fairly easy to use, but obviously you're gonna just plug in your phone. Though I do have one complaint with this. When you plug in Android Auto, you don't get full widescreen, like part of it's blanked off. You don't get that in a Volkswagen ID3. And if you wanna see my full in-depth video review of that car, click on the pop-out banner up there for the link in the description below. Though on the inside, this does feel nicer than the Volkswagen. So you've got lots of practicality. Look, you've got these cup holders here. Although they are a little bit loose for thinner bottles, and that's better with a photo on there. Speaking of which, the door bins aren't the largest. Look, you just have to squeeze that bottle in there. There's some more storage under here. You've got some storage down there for your mobile phone. Obviously, this car has wireless charge. Then you've got your 12 volt charging socket there, normal USB there, and a USB C there. The glove box is a reasonable size. So overall, it's pretty practical in the front. The seats are nice and comfy. Apart from one thing, these headrests do protrude a little bit forward. So I'm not sure that's great for your posture. Uh, oh, another thing I want to point out you get some huge vanity mirrors, which is really good if you're hugely vain like me. Here in the back of the Nero, knee room's good, headroom's good. Even people over six foot will have enough headroom. Also, the floor is flat as well. So if you need to carry three people at once, there's plenty of room for everyone's feet. And the car's reasonably wide. So even with three adults in the back, there is just about enough room. Though this middle seat is quite narrow and firm. So the person in the middle might get a sore bottom after a while from being in between two big blokes. Anyhow, um, you have <laughs> Anyway, you've got an armrest here with some cup holders. So it's a bit of a shame they're not covered because when you're using the armrest, you end up putting your wrist in this hard cup holder, which isn't great. What's also not great is the fact that the ice fix hanger points are a bit of a faff to get to. So it can take age on your first fit in the seat to stab around to get it located. The plus side though, is that they're actually mounted quite high. And it means that the seat is actually quite level when you mount it. And that means when your baby falls asleep, it doesn't flop forward like it does in a lot of cars when it's just resting against the seat squab because it's tilted back usually like that. That's the thing I've learned since being a father. Another thing I've learned is that having USB in the back here on the seat backs that you get in kids is really handy for people in the rear seats because it doesn't like tangle around your legs. Also I like these airplane style storage areas here on the back of the seats. And this look, the rear windows 
Go all the way down, although you probably just noticed you don't have one touch on the back windows like you do at the front, but then you don't on many cars. Overall though, I'm very impressed with the amount of space you've got here in the back of the Nero. It's not quite as big in the back as Kia's own Sportage. So if you want a hybrid version of those, maybe click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link in the description below to watch my review of that car. The big capacity of this electric version of the Kia Nero is 475 litres, which is pretty good and it's a useful square shape. There's a slight boot lip, but it's so small that you can just drag things over it quite easily like that when you're loading. I like this feature as well. So rather than a big bulky parcel shelf, you get this little cover here. And the good thing about that is that you can then easily just store it like that in the car when you're loading things up and it won't get damaged because it's just simple fabric. There's some more storage under there where you've got your charging cables, but you can squeeze a few bits and pieces around there and in these pockets at the sides. There's also a few tie down points. There's one there, there's one there, there's one there, and there's one there. And if you need loads of space, look, you can just fold down the rear seats. They're like completely flat, which makes it easy to hold things straight to the front of the car like that. All good. Well, not exactly. You see, this EV version of the Nero has the biggest boost. If you go for the normal hybrid, its big capacity is actually 25 litres less, 450 litres. That's because the batteries are under the floor, like on the electric version, they're under the seat. And then if you're going for the plug-in hybrid, because the battery pack is then underneath the boot, the load capacity falls to 360 litres. And that brings you on to five annoying things about the new Kia Nero. Well, it is a good idea to have a charging port at the front here, because then you can just nose into a charging bay. If you have a slight collision on your front end, it can damage this port and you won't be able to charge your car. To turn off the lane departure warning, which is always on apparently when you start the car, you have to go into the menu here, choose settings, hit vehicle. There we go, driver safety. And then we need to turn off the lane safety. Why isn't there just a shortcut button somewhere? But I cannot find one anywhere. Doing that while you're driving isn't safe either. Hybrid versions of the Kia Nero can tow up to 1,300 kilos. However, this e-Nero full electric version can only tow 750 kilos. If you're the kind of person that likes to have their steering wheel low, there's a bit of a problem here in the Nero because the top of the rim actually blocks off part of your speedo. Brilliant. I don't know what it is with the electrified Kias and their brakes, but they make this weird noise when you're just creeping along on the brake. That all about. However, it's not all bad. Now here's five cool things about the new Kia Nero, including the front passenger relaxation seat. Look at this, at the press of a button, I can go into relaxed mode. Oh. Yeah, I'll just be here chilling. The Nero has something called vehicle to load, which effectively means that you can plug in household appliances and run them off your car's battery, such as a kettle. Look, I'm actually boiling a kettle from my car. I think it's time for a cup of tea. The range shopping version of the new Kia Nero gets vegan friendly, fake leather interior that actually doesn't feel fake. And the good thing is, is that unlike some other car manufacturers which forget to put fake leather on the steering wheel and still have animal hide on there, there's fake leather there as well. So no animals were harmed in the making of this vehicle. This new version of the Nero may be bigger than its predecessor and have more kit on it. However, it's 20 kilos lighter, though to be fair, it's still quite heavy at 1,740 kilos for this electric version. The hybrid versions of the new Nero use their satellite navigation to work out when they're close to a hospital or a school. And if they are and they have enough battery power, they will run in electric only mode and cut their engines so that they reduce the amount of emissions they emit when they're near sensitive people. Now let's talk about the engines. So the normal hybrid has a 1.6 litre turbo petrol mated to electric motor, drives the front wheels via a six speed automatic gearbox and it puts out 139 horsepower. Then there's the plug-in hybrid, which has the same setup, but it's got a bigger battery on it. And in fact, it can do 40 miles on electric power alone. Also has a slightly bigger electric motor as well. As a result, it has 180 horsepower. Finally then we come to this electric only version. So instead of a petrol engine, it's got a motor driving the front wheels with 201 horsepower. Horsepower. And because an electric motor takes up less room than an internal combustion engine, you then have this little area of storage here under the bonnet. Look where you can keep your cables for charging. Speaking of which, you can charge it to 80% full in about 45 minutes. Now Kia says the range of this car is 285 miles on a full charge. So I've been driving it around and I've averaged four miles per kilowatt hour. When you do the maths, that works out to a real world range of 260 miles, which is actually pretty decent. So which version of the Kia Nero would I go for? On what trim level? Well, I'm gonna configure my ideal one on the Carwell configurator. 
<laughs> if you want to see what the car is, click on the pop-out banner up there for the link in the description below. Right, let's see what this new Kia Nero is like to drive. This is the electric only version, so I'm gonna give you my impression on this. First thing I can tell you is the suspension. Sometimes in electric cars, it can feel overly firm, but actually on this one, they've got it just right. It's a good balance. So it deals with bumps well. Yeah, it's not too soggy. When you go into a corner, the car doesn't lean really badly. Look, it stays nice and flat. The steering is responsive. So too is the electric motor. You put your foot down, it just picks up really nicely. <laughs> so much so that I freaked the safety systems out. So I almost crashed into the back of the car that I'm following which is filming me. I didn't almost crash, I know it's there. One thing that I'm constantly reminded that's there is that lane departure warning which is an absolute blooming nightmare. Maybe I should drive in lane then, eh? I can't be bothered to disengage it, like I said already, it's so much of a faff. Anyhow, as you're going through town, this car, yeah, visibility is good. You see it higher than you do in like a normal hatchback. It's not full SUV height, but the view forward is good and the bonnet drops away. So you've got a good idea where the corner of the cars are. Yeah, the other back, that's pretty reasonable. And you've got some big door mirrors as well. It's a reasonably quiet car to travel in. Obviously, there's no sound from the engine on this particular version because it's electric only. One thing you do notice though, is when you go over bumps, you hear a bit of a clonking sound from the suspension there it is now one of the problems with some electric and hybrid cars when you're driving around town is that the regen effect of the brakes can make them feel a little bit grabby when you first touch the pedal this is nice and progressive though and you've got four different stages of regen so completely off to the car just coast to full on eye pedal they call it it's one pedal drive so i can lift off the accelerator and the car will come to a complete standstill you don't have to touch the brake at all it's really good in town maximizes your efficiency so you recoup every last bit of energy as you're slowing down and it means you don't actually have to use the friction brakes at all. Last thing for me to check, turning circle. So it's 10.7 meters, which is slightly better than its key competitors. I'm just gonna go around this mini roundabout once, see what it's like. Look, can I go all the way around? My angle into it was really bad, but I still think I'm gonna make this without hitting the alloy. Yep, did it. Thanks for waiting, it's very kind of you. That really helps when you're just driving around town, going to like multi-story car parks, which are very narrow, all that kind of stuff, and for when you're parking. And if you're taking it on long journeys, it's really good that this particular version, you can get it with automatic cruise control, which will keep you safe distance from the car in front, and it'll auto steer as well to keep you in lane. Then, I don't mind the auto steer function, but when I'm just driving normally like this, it's not doing it now, it's classic. Doesn't do it when you want it to. <laughs> I've weaved across the white line hoping for it to go off, but no, it, it won't do it now. Kia says this electric version of the Nero can do 0 to 60 in 7.8 seconds, but I'm gonna find out for myself from my specialist timing gear up here. I'm gonna launch it now. Takeoff isn't that quick, but then it builds quite nicely. Then it really starts to go. What are we doing? 0 to 60, 7.83, bang on the money. I'll take that. So then, what's my final verdict on the new Kia Nero? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the Nero. It may have gone up in price, but you are getting quite a lot for your money. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Click on those windows there for some more videos. And on that box there to get a car wow to sell your car. Our dealers will bid on your car to make sure you get a great price for it. Thanks for watching.